Today we're going to be taking a 3D object, either OBJ or STL, we're going to be throwing it into Peppy Hero Designer 4 and we're going to be unfolding it for foam armor construction. Let's get into it. Today we're going to be taking a .stl file of a mobile Gundam, I believe it's the Strike Helmet, and we're going to be opening it up in a Peppy Hero Designer 4 and we're gonna be unfolding it for the first time and then translating it into foam. Um, I may actually do the foam translation or you can actually check out the video I made before this one where I've taken a Pepecura file and translate it into foam. And then I might just cut out halfway through this because that already kind of teaches you how to add disjoint and stuff. This is a little different though because what's gonna happen when we take a raw file and we throw it in there is it's not gonna come out all pretty like a pep file will already be where everything's already been cut, everything's been organized and what you're doing there is you're just taking it, chopping it in little bits for foam and translating it that way. This is just gonna throw a soup of a mess onto the page um, and we're gonna see what it turns out to be like. So let's get started. We're going to go to file, we're going to open and right here I just have a little flash drive with a couple things on it to show you today. Um, there's our Halo Reach gauntlet uh, that we did in the previous video. I did not save that so that is still just the pet file. But today we're going to be opening up the build strike head. I'm going to be showing you a sentinel beam as well uh, just to show you how chaotic this can actually be. Which is kind of weird because I'm not actually seeing the sentinel beam. I know it's there, but that's the pet file for it. But I'll have an OBJ file to show you uh, a couple things, a couple key points I'm going to be pointing out here. Like, because this helmet, uh, I already checked it a little bit earlier, comes out kind of smooth. The Sentinel Beam, when I opened it up a couple days ago, did not come out so smooth. It is just a soup. So let's go ahead. We're going to open up the Gundam Build Strike helmet. All right, first thing that's going to pop up is going to be an STL op, uh, import option. I always use it on auto detect. I honestly don't know what these two do. Never touched them. So we're just going to leave it on auto detect. Next, you're going to pop up. It's going to tell you vertices, faces, and everything like that. Things that were just removed because they were either too complicated or they just... I'm not really sure what it's deleting, but, you know, it's just part of the process. Here is a very important screen. It's going to say too many faces every single time, no matter how big or small the piece, you can have a hand plate, you could have all of Gypsy Danger. It's going to still tell you too many faces no matter what. Um, but the number you want to look for here, though, is the actual number of faces. So this is 6,194. That is a very good number. Usually anything that's below, I'd say 30,000 to 25,000, it's going to come out decent. Anything below... 15,000 is going to come out really good for chopping into bits. Basically, the number of faces is determining how many individual triangles there are on that particular file. Um, you want a lower number for foam construction and the general use, ease of use on PEP4. Numbers that are scary start at 70,000. At 70,000, uh, actually does live up to the name too many faces and things are going to get real choppy. The program's probably going to slow down quite a bit um, and it's going to be a nightmare to unfold. 80,000 is starting to push the limits and then usually above that, uh, 90 or to 100,000, it's probably actually going to crash Pep Designer 4. It just can't handle stress loads of that many faces on it. So more than likely, it's going to just crash. Uh, you might be able to get through with it. I think I got through, uh, I believe Samus's arm cannon I got at the one time, and it was like 88,000. And I can play with it for a little bit, and then like usually five or 10 minutes into messing with it, the whole stuff just crashes. Like as I try to rotate the 3D model, it's like, no, no, we're done here, and the whole program will just shut down. So for this, 6,194, that's perfect. It's right in the butter zone. Um, I never click this because I want to see how many faces it has. 
So never click this. Don't ever let this go away because this will be your determining factor on if the file is going to load, how many faces it has, if it's going to be a nightmare, or if it's just going to crash. Clicking next, you actually get the 3D model to finally pop up. It asks you to flip the faces. Uh, back faces are colored dark gray. Um, I always hit no flip because I like the white. If you hit flip, it's going to turn everything dark gray. I don't really like that. I like to have the white face, so we're going to say no flip. This is going to determine which way your model faces. Um, well, you can tell it's a helmet, but the face of it's actually on yellow. So if you wanted to change the initial orientation of where it starts at, we can hit the yellow and it'll flip the helmet so it's kind of upright. It's not the perfect angle, but it's close. So we hit finish. It'll tell you that 9,279 edges were merged. Still don't know what that means to this day. All I know is that it actually went through and we can actually work the file. If you don't get to this point, if it freezes on that color thing, you have too many faces. You're gonna have to go back because that's usually where it crashes when it's trying to ed merge these edges. So you'll never get this. If you get this, you got through. If you didn't get this, you have to remesh it, which I might make another video of that. It depends on you guys. Leave a comment down below if you want me to make a video on you know, files that you try to throw in there that are just, just too many faces. I've, <laughs> I've come across one that was like 1.5 million faces. And I had to like crunch it and crunch it and crunch it and crunch it to the point where it just, oh, it was terrible. But yeah, so let's get into it. And then next we're gonna have the scale of the model. Since this, I got this off a of Thingiverse. Let's quickly type something in because I honestly didn't have any uh, 3D models on hand. I've had to reset my entire computer recently, so everything's on backup storage right now. I haven't reloaded, uh, reloaded anything back onto it. Uh, so I just went on the Thingiverse real quick, found a Gundam helmet, I'm like, yeah, there we go. Uh, so this is already scaled to be wearable. Uh, judging by its height, though, I don't really know because that seems really small. Uh, we'll get into it, we'll take a look at it. But uh, this I usually don't touch until I'm ready to actually do the unfold. Now when you, uh, let me put it this way, when you get a raw file that, you know, wasn't off of Thingiverse, was not designed to be worn already, was just a straight rip from the game, most of the times the height is gonna be like half inch, half inch, three quarter inch. It's gonna be tiny. Um. Like I said, when that happens, you want to quickly adjust as soon as you get in to be the right height and everything, so that way it adds the pages. So that way you know what your, you know what the pages are going to be like. When I open that Sentinel file uh, here in a little bit, you'll see what I'm talking about because I think that is just a straight rip and it appears all in one page to start, and it's a nightmare. So we're going to click OK, and now we're in. You'll notice that right away there's nothing. Nothing's over here <clears throat> because we haven't technically unfolded it. We just loaded the model into Pepecure Designer 4. We have not yet hit the big almighty unfold button. Uh, let me let me scroll over again, give some like angelic music. That's the big button. That is the we're about to make this 3D model into a workable system that we can translate onto a 2D plane. So let's go ahead and click the big unfold. And you'll notice that it's unfolding rather quickly because there's not that many faces and boom, it's done. Finish before I even stop talking. Uh, with a lot bigger files that are like up there pushing like the 50 to 60,000, if you're trying to unfold those, it will take significantly longer. It shouldn't crash. I think I've only ever had it crash once on that, and that was when I snuck that, like, uh, Samus thing through. It crashed the first time, I think, and then the second time I finally got it to go through. And that file's still a nightmare to work with to this day. Um, but here we go. Everything on the right is now been placed there, and you'll notice that it's just a big jumble mess. And like we say from last time, the other video, we want to select everything. We want to make sure everything is there. It should be because it's just a straight rip. Nothing should be hiding in the trash bin. So yep, we are good. Um, you'll notice that things are blue. Or like a kind of like a gray color. You also notice that the tabs are there, so we're gonna get rid of the tabs. 
goodbye flaps, such smoothing out. But everything is blue for some reason. Um, some files do this, others don't. It's, I don't know. I don't know how or why it does it. That's all just a, a preference. So if you go up to other, texture on off, you turn that off, and other blues away, and you're back to having just the plain white faces everywhere. Um, you can keep the blue on if you want, but you'll notice that whenever you click things, I mean, it highlights it red, but now that it's like a, it doesn't highlight it as well, at least to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to staring at a white screen all day. So texture off. We are back to normality, whatever normality is. And you'll notice that when you straight unfold something, there are tiny little pieces everywhere. Like if you go over this little quadrant over here, like there's just a triangle hanging out here. Oh, there's even a smaller triangle. There's even a smaller triangle. Look, look at this little guy. Where does he go? Where do you go? Like in the, in the crook there? Where are you? Hello? All right, it's helmet in. All right. Is it inside the helmet? No, it shouldn't be inside the helmet. It's on the back side. It says it's right here somewhere, but it just can't see it. It's so tiny. Like, where, where, sir? Where do you go? Huh. Oh, anyway. You're going to get a ton of tiny little pieces like that. Um, actually, if I try to hide, well, I might grab some of the bigger pieces down here because of hitboxes. Oh, there's one. There's like one right there in that little knob. Ooh. Ooh wee. There's one up there in the corner. Is that just the corner piece of wow, look at that. See this is the nightmare of unfolding things straight from a, a fresh just 3D file itself. Everybody that grabs their Pepicura files and unfolds them for foam, you're you're lucky you don't have to deal with the the nonsense. Uh, I believe this was actually created by somebody in... I'll have to go back through the uh, Thingiverse log, but I think this is actually modeled by somebody. So this isn't a straight game rip that I know of. Um, game rips tend to be a little bit more low poly just because they can add textures on top that give it more detail. A uh, good example is the Halo 2 armor. Like, it is just almost flat in a lot of areas, and all that, like texture detail that you see is just it's it's, that. it's just texture it's just a skin they put over top the model that adds more detail to it um but on a, a custom made thing like this where somebody actually has gone in and made it in blender itself um you won't have you're gonna have a lot more detail put into it and this is still kind of low poly and yeah it's it's definitely low poly because you can see all the individual squares like bigger triangles everywhere if you're like click here and there's like 80 triangles just in this one square that is a very high detailed piece but so i still put this on low poly end just because it has 6,000 faces um but either way this is the soup you end up with this is the mess that you have to work with and if you notice when i clicked on that one like spot of the helmet like it's pretty much the whole helmet the most of this helmet is just in this one big piece up here and this is where unfolding this into foam is a little bit more tricky because now you have this giant piece and you're gonna have to cut this into individual sections for each spot of the foam that you're gonna use um, but going back to our original video, is this helmet symmetrical? Yes, it is. So we can split this sucker right down the middle and have an exact copy all the way around it. So that'll help us in the long run of eliminating a lot of these pieces. Like here's a, I can see this, this, and well, they might be opposite sides actually. Oh, it's an internal piece. Yeah, see, there's one of those internal pieces that we will not need. Actually, this whole, yep, this whole helmet has internals. Look at that. So right off the bat, double check it, but if we go out to the outside, you can see none of it is on the outside. This is all just an internal shell. So we can just get rid of that big piece. Whoop, get rid of that big piece. I think this big piece was all internal right too, yep. Like you can see through the cracks that it's there, but it's not the actual outer shell, which is what you're gonna be making out of foam. 
So this whole big piece, and look at look how fast we're clearing this out. It's amazing. This one, oh wait, this might be on the outside too. It is not. Ooh, this whole helmet has an internal core. That's ugh. it's good and bad. It's good because the the designer recognized it and sectioned it off. But it's bad that it adds a whole bunch of pieces that you're gonna have to keep looking for like that that should be all you know internal it should all be internal because he, he obviously designed it this way but you just never know because one of these times you're gonna click out here and you're gonna be like oh well this piece is internal too and next thing you know you're throwing away <laughs> like <laughs> half your helmet because you just didn't realize it was all inside down there double check is it external nope it's all still internal so there's a all right well that's gonna help clear this board out quite a bit uh, do, 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 do. you know uh let me get back to you real quick let me let me just let me just go through this real quick and clean this up okay i'm not gonna fret too much about the smaller like the little triangles that are probably hiding in there uh, because those will be removed eventually in the big end process anyway which is something I do for a lot of things that I'm unfolding that have a ton of tiny little pieces everywhere I just wait till the end and I do a massive like purge of all the small pieces that aren't going to be used because normally this file is a little different because this file has it where all these little pieces are on uh, pages Normally when you get and I'll show you what the sentinel beam normally When you do the unfold it takes these little pieces and it puts them in its own separate little like area. I don't know why uh, Why it didn't do that for this file, but hey You roll the dice I guess and Ooh, you know what we grabbed a face That was both internal and external. Look at that. Oh, they're hiding it. Oh, they're hiding it. How, let me guess. Is this... No? Who built this file? Nope, there it is. I was going to say, it should be on the outside, too. There it is. I'll save you from the trash. Ooh, that's a lot of... That's a lot of lines. That's the risk you take. Get over there. Alright. Alright, I think I got it cleaned up for the most part. This should all still be internal. Yep, that's pretty much a good portion of it. You'll see this part here looked like it was internal, but it's also external. It's the bottom little mask, like the transformer looking mask. Yes, I know I said transformer on a Gundam, but you gotta admit they still look like transformer masks. Didn't they come out around the same time, too? Put that on screen. Which one came out first? Okay. Alright, so now that we got the inside taken care of, let's focus on the outside. Especially with this big piece. Because this this is what can be intimidating for a lot of people that are... You know, they throw... They're like, oh, I'll just throw a 3D object in and it'll hit unfold and everything will be nice and neat and clean and ready to print. And no. Um, it does its best to try to keep things on a page. Like, you'll notice that, like, all these little things are actually well organized going on individual pages. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to make the big jumbled mess like this, where it's, like, pretty much half the helmet. It's got, look, one little visor eye is part of that. And then parts of the helmet, and on the other side, other parts, like, some, like that's the top for that one. That's the bottom for that one. It's just, there's no rhyme and reason. I've never figured out why, when you hit unfold, it just throws things together there's never a neat order for it but I mean, that's what we're here to do we are here to convert this into foam so what I normally like to do is I'll find I'll take the big piece first the biggest piece that's on the 2d plane and I'll just start sectioning it off so like we got this whole back section here and it starts this piece here so we find that, and that's, well, it's actually its own separate piece. So right off the bat, we can just separate that. And let's stick with the left side again, like the other video we did. 
Everything on the left stays, everything on the right goes. So find him, his counterpart. He's right there, and we'll just toss him. Going back to this big piece. That is not the part that joins the top and the bottom together, so we need to find out where that's happening. Um, could be the brim, or it could be, could be this bit right here. That might be it right there. So we take him, this will be the upper half of this right here. So we'll cut that off, and that should cut the upper, yep, and the lower. Well, <laughs> Uh, and the right side apparently, so let's find him too. Section him off. But now that we know that's all on the right side, should be, oh, translates over to the middle here, right underneath that little head plume. So, and that's all on here too. So we can look at the general shape of it. We know this big curve here. So there's that big curve. There's that top piece that curves down too. So that is where the middle section would be right here, adjoining right at that, right where these two pieces come together. And then there's the middle bridge. So let me take this. Oh, we're gonna, eh, we're gonna cut it right here. And that should separate. Yep, that's all the right side. And then this should be that middle with the right eye. So we know that's the right side, so toss them out. Left Twix only. And we're gonna put that there. And now we should have bottom and top separated. Yes, we do. Perfect. <clears throat> so let's go to the top. Let's move this bottom one down just a little bit out of the way for now. Go up here to the top. We know that big round piece from earlier when we did the other side. So here's where it translates on this side. It's gonna be this piece right here. So let's go ahead and cut him off here. That's joining. <clears throat> let's get him a little bit closer. What are you connected to, sir? Oh, you're right here. No, right here, no. I would feel like that little piece there does not belong. Hmm. I honestly don't know how this piece is connected either. Like, is it just this? Oh, wow. <laughs> we gotta get in there. Microsurgery. There we go. Put him back together. Yeah, because that's for that top like headpiece there. So now we have the headpiece and this piece separated. And then we can go about just like our normal uh, normal foam deconstruction. So obviously this big piece here, it's got some curves to it. This will translate and smooth out a little bit. And actually probably wanna keep this triangle attached with the rest of this, cause that would make it look better. So we take him off and we slap him on there. We'll cut this top piece off. Boom, boom. This will rejoin, whoop, rejoin, uh, please, no, 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 green, there we go, <laughs> there's a lot of little lines there, and let me zoom in, there are two or three lines, see that makes, I think there's three, one, two, wait, one, two, three, yeah, there's three lines in there, makes life a little hard, but that's just the, the nature of unfolding. It's got a little triangle. Where does that little triangle go? Here? No, it's the opposite. Oh, it's part of that center there. So we, you know, we're gonna keep him separated. Offspring reference. And we're gonna put him away for now. Oop, that is the wrong line. You were just glued on there, aren't you? Was it this one? Wait, which one was it? It's not that one. Ooh, that's tricky. Well, we'll just take them off that way for now. So we got the big piece there, which that'll be all one solid chunk. We got this piece here. Now he's kind of got 
a rough angle on the back end, like right here. Um, but since he's got a decent curve to match with this curve, because this is almost, you know, it's curving around, and this one's curving up and over. And I think those two would translate well when you attach them. So we can actually probably just leave this as one solid piece and it wouldn't be an issue. Because this little piece here doesn't have, it doesn't divot down. So yeah, it'll just be a big rolling swoop. And the foam can easily bend that way. The problem might be is here. Will it fit on one page? So, so let's, let's just say this was scaled properly. You're going to notice that it does not fit on one page no matter how well I move it. Oh, this looks like a, a leg almost. But if we, you know, we might be able to rotate it to fit on one page. But then you're going to be wasting most of your page having this thing go straight across it. Oh, it still just barely doesn't fit. We should probably check our page settings. We're on letter. We have 0.44. And yep, everything's saved over from last time. Uh, if you didn't watch the other video and you're here just to learn about this, uh, I usually set it for 0 0.4, 0 0.4 for uh, margin sizes. I'm on letter because I live in the US of A. Uh, print lines clear, or print lines clearly, which means that it won't have any transparency on it. Uh, I usually have the pre uh, page numbers on, so that way I can reference back while I'm building it. And print alignment uh, will add little, uh, little half boxes down here, so if you need to in this case, which we might have to transfer across two pages, it's gonna put little lines here, like like a little line here, here, on every single corner. So you can actually take a ruler, if you wanted to keep this piece in one solid piece, you could take a ruler, <clears throat> trace down, add maybe a little tab or something, and then add arrows to let you indicate you know, which way it's going maybe even a number reference. Uh, when I was building the Bugatti, I think I went through the alphabet three times because there were so many pieces that overlapped pages that I had to keep track of them all. So I wrote down the alphabet, like, you know, A, and I came back through, like, you know, A matches to A, B matches to B. I came back through and I was like, double A matches to double A, double B matches to double B, and I got the triples even, and I was like, oh. There's just so many pieces. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it because then it, you can make a nice clean cut, a nice clean cut, and they merge back together perfectly. Um, if you don't have those margin lines on, it's gonna be really hard to tell exactly where, I mean, you will see where the lines stop each place, but it's gonna be hard to get your ruler, especially if it like has a curve to it or anything like that. It's gonna be kind of hard to line things up. Um, but even if you, if you did not want to keep this as one solid piece going across two pages, because that might be a preference of yours, that you don't like to assemble things with scotch tape, and like you know, you know, basically just cut it and you just put the two pieces together, scotch tape it. Um, if you don't want to do that, then I suggest putting it at that break right on this back end here, like right here where it meets, and just take it and you just cut it right in half. And then now this will definitely fit on this page once you spin it. And then you can put it right on the page. Um, moving on, let's see, let's grab this back. And this will be a good example right here. This big mess of everything. So that is going to be this bit down here. So let's go ahead and cut that off and cut this off. Oop. Not the right one, apparently. Is it this one? Oh, and this one. Okay. Put you back together. Oh, we still have the full piece. No, 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 no. Get off of there. There we go. All right. Join you together, and we'll see <laughs> what a mess this is. So you're going to see that we have a ton of... And I mean a ton of little gapped open spaces here. Like this links to this, this links to this. Like this corner is supposed to link up to that corner. If I put it on, yeah, like those. And then this here is supposed to link to this. This is what doesn't translate the foam very well. 
Like if you have a big piece like this and there's that big open gap, you have to cut around, through, down, over, up, over, down, and do all that nonsense. That's what you don't want. Um, but I do see a pattern here in which if you look at it, it's almost a band across the top, a band there, a band there, and a band there. With the only little difference being that there is an indent right here highlighted by all these lines. So I bet you if I rotate down a little bit, there's going to be an indentation. Yep. Ever so slightly. And I think it's right there too with that band line. Yeah. Um, but either way, what I would normally do in this situation, since I see these band lines and they go both ways, they go up and down and they go across. You want to find the bigger of the two and go with that one. So like it was a band line up top here should be, oh, that's the top and that's the bottom. So let's start on the bottom then. So that one's almost fully complete. Yeah. So it's going to take a little bit, but what you want to do is just cut all these off one by one. I think that one's actually just joined. It's just attached there. Yeah. Get rid of all this little excess stuff here. I think that just goes to the, should be these bits over here. Yeah. Let's cut those off and then just and just go down the line, cut every single one of these off. Don't worry too much about like making a mess whenever you're doing this, because this one, you know, this is gonna get messy. There's no helping it. But we're gonna clean it up as we go. So we're cut, 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 and cut. And then now we have these bigger chunks. We'll join those all together. And now we have one big band at the bottom, as opposed to being attached to that main piece. So you're gonna do that for every row here. And I noticed that like starting here, it has that little band starting. Uh, might be an issue just cause of the drop. Let me double check, but eh, it's not that big of a drop. So you can honestly leave the band either on the top or the bottom piece because like I said, you can see it, it starts here and it slopes inward just a little bit, like a minute amount. Um, but if it was a perfect 90 degree, that would cause an issue because now all of a sudden it's thinking like this point and this point are right on top of each other. And so when you leave that onto a piece, it's actually adding in that distance, like it's extending that piece to be two more millimeters longer than it is. And while it's not an issue now, whenever you go to assemble it, all of a sudden this piece, which should be sitting over top of this piece is now two millimeters longer, pushing this piece down, pushing this piece down. And then you're running into issues where your lines aren't lining up anymore. But since it's ever so slight, and I don't think it's gonna cause that big of an issue. I mean, it's, it's barely even down at all. We can just leave it attached to, we'll say the next row here. So we'll cut there, cut there, there. Uh, cut here, 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 here. Ooh, that one got cut in half. What happened to you? Ooh. Control Z, oh, those two, there, there we go. And then that should be here, yeah. On these like ones, it's almost invisible. So you just kinda, just kinda start from the middle because you'll notice that inside the face itself, it's like a triangle. Like as you scroll up, oh, there's a triangle cut there. There's a triangle cut there. If you're trying to find the edge, you just go across. Nope, still not straight. And then boom, it's like a straight across. So even though you don't see this line, it's hidden in here somewhere. So you just start, boom, boom, boom. Or if you just wanna kinda guess to start where it is and there it is. So we're keeping it on, so we go up one more, boom. And then same thing with this one, boom. All right, let me start assembling these. There, and this might be the, where the issue comes in because now we're at that point where that little middle section is, where this little divot is. So we're gonna keep that divot separate. So let's assemble the divot real quick. That's that piece here. That's the divot. 
and now we have it fully assembled and actually it's not that much of a difference I still think it's kind of flat um in this case we're gonna assemble it yeah because it comes out flat anyway so we're gonna assemble it but in cases where it say it didn't come out like that and it's still a jumbled up mess and you don't know what to do in that case I wouldn't keep this whole band as one big piece I'd cut it right where that divot is get rid of the right side keep the left side and just mirror that side and then for the top one if it's gonna be a straight across just keep that as a straight across again you're trying to you're trying to make it easier for yourself and if that's the way to do it if that's the way to do it then uh, do it that way so we're just gonna finish joining these all together and since that divot didn't make that much of a difference it should once it's all completed oops, see we're missing the top piece there cut you off join you there there we go. And now we have that whole piece there, and the top edge here gets kind of goofy looking. I think it's just because that's missing. It's right there, isn't it? Yep. Everything is in triangles. So if you notice a big like triangle piece missing, it's probably because it's hidden somewhere else. And like I said, these guidelines, when you hover over something, it tells you what piece it goes to. So you'll be able to pull it. A big problem with that though is if that little triangle's on like say the the top half still like this giant piece it's gonna take this whole thing flip it and slam it on and you're gonna have a big mess so uh, I wonder if I could do that real quick just to show you like how big of a nightmare that would be I'm trying to figure out you know what piece goes where you're like yeah does that go to right there yes yeah, so you're like oh are well, these two join together right well no <laughs> And now all of a sudden, uh, you have a you have a big mess. It's just covering over things. Everything's overlapping. Uh, Control Z to escape that reality and get back to normalcy. So we click here, and we're not like we're here on this side, but we're not here on this side because these two are still floating out there in the ether. Yep, they're right there. So we just kind of grab those real quick actually we just grab them like this and that way we know where this line is boom like this and that way we know this line is boom and now we have the next solid piece going down boom and boom and then we can continue that with the top piece um, I'm gonna move on just cuz I'm not gonna stay here all day and unfold this entire thing um, but we'll just move on to another good example of what to do in situations Here's a good example. So we got this little bit, or this just popped up. We got a full notch here, which I believe is this one. Yep. We get a half notch here, which is this one. So that's the top round bit and that's the bottom round bit. They're almost actually identical, which is kind of amazing. Whoever modeled this, good job. Um, so we're missing this bottom half. This is on the left side of the helmet we're using. So we want to just find him highlight Oop. zoom out where is he going he's right there okay he's not attached to too much so we can click him over bring him over there we go and he's got the little pit there on the end chop that off this one i think also has one we'll chop that off real quick yeah it goes down there even if like Say you chop something off like that, like a little triangle, and you're like, oh, I'm never going to be able to find that when the time comes to, you know, if you see where you chopped it off at, especially if you're looking at the model and you see it's like, oh, chopped off there, you can actually double click on the 3D model like this, and it'll zip that part away and attach it to where it's supposed to actually go, like where you'd want it. So that's another neat thing you can do. Uh, getting back to this, though, we have two pieces, and this will translate the foam pretty good it's 10 millimeter it's gonna be uh, kind of hard because it's much thicker if you want to make this out of five you could because you're gonna be putting a cap on this end anyway that's gonna cover that entire edge um, so you can make this out of five that it'll translate this way better than it will that way because this way you're crunching everything on top of itself this way you're spreading everything out and away from itself like you know when you try to bend something in on itself it pinches on itself 
but uh, since you're going the other way concave with it, it's spreading itself out. Um, yeah, we'll keep this as one solid piece. And then you'll notice that it has this attachment on the end here. That's actually hidden underneath here. Like it's it's underneath this cap. I don't know if I can even click on it to highlight it because the cap might cover everything. Like it just doesn't want to, doesn't want to grab it, but it is there. You can actually see, I click on it. Yeah, you can actually see one edge there is highlighted. So that's buried underneath this cap. And since this cap is gonna cover everything, we really don't need this piece. So we can go ahead and disjoin him. Ooh. Disjoin him and him. And just take this radioactive sign and throw it in the bin. We don't need it. We don't need radioactive signs around here. It's safe. So we got that one and that one. Um, and then of course you find the opposing sides, you throw those out if you're working for foam. If you're working for pep though, which I don't know if too many people actually unfold things for pep anymore, but if you do, you're gonna wanna keep both sides. And uh, I'm not gonna get into pep unfolding 3D models for pep, mostly because I don't use it anymore. But if you guys really, really want me to, I can do it. I can make a video on it. I'll sit down, I'll take something like this and show you how to pep it or unfold it for pepping as, a fo or as opposed to foam. Um, like I said, I, I know a lot of people are moving away from pep into foam because foam is a lot easier. Um, but there are some people out there that, that like the, the more detail. They like to put the fiberglass and everything and resin it and bond to it. I did that for three years and I touched foam for the first time and I, there's no turning back. <laughs> I am a foamer for life. And I'm one of the rare people that actually do helmets out of foam too, I found out. There's a lot of people that you know, they 3D print now or they'll still do Pep and Bondo for helmets, but I have found that foaming out a helmet is not that hard. It's not as intimidating as people think it is. And the stress that takes off of your neck at the end of the day, because you're not wearing a five pound bucket on your head, you're wearing a half pound bucket on your head, it's, it makes a major difference. Anyway, getting back into this, let's see if we can find another piece that might cause issues like here. Actually, hmm, you need the visor? Ooh, you know what? It would be a good piece. If you're gonna make these out of foam, let's grab one of these little cylinders here. In this case, uh, maybe I would make this out of foam. I don't know. Sometimes I make pieces like this out of foam, the round cylinders. The cylinders don't translate into foam very well unless you do them like right. You take your time and you heat them up, you hold their shape and then you, you know, the foam wants to always like be rubbery basically if heating them up helps but for little pieces like this you're probably more than likely gonna like really burn the foam um you know, you know i mean if you got the time take the time to make multiple chances at it but um cases like this i try to find something in the real world that's like a cap shape like a shampoo bottle or something and just put that on there or shampoo bottle, the whole bottle, the cap. Take the cap, paint it, and put it on there instead. Um, I know for like one of my Halo Reach helmets, if you look very closely, it's not actually foam, but on that little piece right there, that's just a dowel rod. It's just a little wooden dowel rod because that would not translate the foam very well. It's too small. And I know they make um, like foam dowel rods now. You can find them at like uh, hobby stores. Uh, like Michael's or uh, uh, what's that big popular one? Anyway, you can find them at places like that, like any any craft store that sells foam. I know oh, it was Joanne's Fabric; they were selling foam stuff there for a while too. Uh, but I have seen foam dowel rods at some places. But this is not really a dowel rod; it's more a cone. But if we wanted to translate it into foam, we can. Um, just want to get rid of all this little extras that are attached to that actual cylinder shape 
And then what you want to do is you want to check to see if this end matches with the other end, and it does. That tells you that that end will go to that end, and the, the cone is complete, the cylinder is complete. So if it's not, then you just click, you try to find out where, let's like, say we separate it, and oh no, he's gone, oh no, end of the world. And you go to click on it, and you're like, oh, well, that translates to something up there. That also translates, you just bring him back. Ooh, and I brought him back and immediately dismissed him. And then you have the full uh, cone shape there. And then this, of course, is going to be the end piece. And it's just a big jumbled mess, isn't it? Like, it is not a proper circle anymore. It's kind of missing some bits. Let's get him attached as much as we can. Oh, and he grabbed the whole section there. He's missing a little slice of the pie. If you are a real human being and you go to your grandmother's pie and you cut this out and leave that crust there i will find you okay don't do that <laughs> don't be that person there we go the the pie is complete now i lost my mind there for a second anyway so now we have this piece and we know this translates onto this you're gonna cut you know, when you go to assemble it, you're going to cut in and in and blah, blah, blah. And like I said, I have hit and misses with cones, um, like cone shape being translated into foam, even just cylinders. Uh, I made a rocket launcher completely out of foam just to see if I could do it. And the tubes on the rocket launcher, uh, just, you know, when you're wrapping that much foam around, 10 millimeter foam, and it just doesn't want to stay anymore. Like, it, just, it doesn't want to be a perfect circle. So, yeah. That, that's my experience with cones and tubes with foam. Alright, so I think for the most part, that covers just about everything that you're going to come across when assemb or, uh, unfolding all this. Well, we got this unholy nightmare going on here. Hang on. Like, what does that go to? So let's click that. That's got a lot of lines. We're just going to double check to make sure that that's not something that's going to become an issue when you unfold. So... I think it's just, yeah. So this is the piece that had the back and the front all attached on one. So you're almost going to see a mirror effect. You're going to know that this is the front. Sometimes you won't, but we can definitely tell this is the front based on the little cutouts here and on the back end, it does not have the cutouts. Um, I think it's that little bit supposed to be like up there somewhere. So we know, I'm just looking at it, that this little jumbled mess of a line is actually gonna be the cutoff point because it wraps around from here to there and then back over on itself to where it's almost flat on the back of itself in a 2D plane. So we can cut that off there and that should disjoin the front from the back. Let's double check, but yeah. And that eliminates a lot of that hassle. So we can just get rid of that. Off to the trash you go. And then we're just left with the front and then it's the opposite side there. Yeah, it's, I think it just wraps just a little bit around. But a lot of it's gonna be like, you're gonna be zooming in, you're gonna be looking at lines, you're like, uh. And just trying to figure out angles and everything but for the most part when you click unfold and does the, the major first unfold of everything uh for low poly files it's gonna keep everything pretty tight like you shouldn't have too many issues as you as you go into bigger things like all right you know what? let's open it up let's open up the sentinel beam and let me show you the disaster that awaits you if you try to do something that's very high poly count so this is my progress on the Sentinel Beam. I think it had 65,000 faces. This is from Halo Infinite. Let me full screen this. There we go. Okay, so this is the progress I've made so far on the Halo Infinite uh, Sentinel Beam. It's gonna be my next uh, build weapon. Uh, but I've already done the mass unfold for it. I think it came out to about 65,000 faces. It was quite a bit. 
you can see it, even as I rotate it in here, it kind of chugs more than any other file that I've loaded in so far. It's got all these little tiny bits in here, uh, which I won't be unfolding. That'll probably just be like a PVC pipe with a whole bunch of etching into it. But you can see uh, I've already scaled it. It's to 25 inches. Um, but you can see the amount of little tiny pieces it decided to put everywhere. Like, this is probably just one of those little squares on the thing, isn't it? And it kind of... It's tucked up there. Yeah, it's right there. Like that. No, it's not even that piece. I don't know where that piece is. Let's double click on this one. We zoom out. And we tr we play Where's Waldo. There it is. And it's right there. Yeah, it's every one of these little tiny squares is one of those little tiny squares. And it goes all the way around. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's a bad thing unfolding someone with so many faces and so many parts that it just makes jumbled messes. I've cleaned up a good portion of this because here's my progress so far on the gun. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a, this is a different type of foam unfolding. This is, uh, like silhouette foam unfolding, which once again, if you want me to do a video on that, I can do it in the future. Um, but that's a completely different pro uh, process where you're actually just taking the faces and stacking them on top of each other. You'll notice it doesn't wrap around. It doesn't have like certain angles and everything. And you're basically just going to make a outline template of the whole thing and then cut multiple of that template stacking it up as you build across. So like this piece here it's probably six pieces all the way through the same shape and then just building off and cutting off little chunks and everything like that. Like I said, I can go into more detail if you want to make a video on it, let me know. But for now, I just wanted to show you what happens if you unfolded something uh, that had a lot more faces, a lot more different angles. It's more detailed. You got a huge mess of line. I don't even know what this is. Oh, that's the top end uh, barrel. I have not gotten to and it's when I clicked on fold it kept everything together there's two separate sides all put together so as you cut into it and you section it off more and more like oh I'm not going to use well obviously I'm not going to use the opposite side I'm not going to use this end here like starting from here over like and I think this is what like intimidates a lot of people is to, like oh they see this and like oh well that's just way too much. You find the center piece that you don't, or the center point where you're not gonna need this anymore. Find it, cut that off. Ooh, it's probably a little sliver, isn't it? Yep. Here too, yep. There we go, released itself. And then, well, that's actually the side I need, isn't it? Yeah. So this whole section is just gone. Like they'll see that and they'll be like, well, that's too much. I don't know what I'm doing. Find where you need to start and just make that first initial cut in the big pieces like this. And you can just eliminate all of that. And suddenly it's easier. Like now I'm only dealing with this and I only need like this face that's showing. I won't need all of this jumble. I can start just eliminating the jumble. And as you eliminate more and more jumble and things start looking like it's actual shape you're like okay that that's making progress you got to make progress you get you got to get the the creative juices going and i know it can be intimidating looking at something like this but i mean that's it's part of the learning process you gotta you gotta start i mean i'm taking this on and i know it's still a challenge but uh i've got eight years of experience and pep designer so you gotta take that first step you gotta wet the toes you gotta jump in there because yeah you can keep relying on you know asking people like hey can you unfold this and hey can you unfold this if you toss them this to unfold they're probably gonna look at you weird <laughs> or they're probably gonna want money compensation because this takes time I've been on this for I've been on this gun for two or three nights now just trying to pick at things, trying to get it ready to go. Um, but like I said, you if you're 
going to get into this and you want to learn, uh, I hope these videos help you out. So thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, you know, normal YouTube banter that everybody throws at the end of the videos. And then like 40% of people do it, maybe even less, like 30%. Either way, if you have any questions, um, if you have any tips, suggestions, anything like that, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see the videos that I mentioned throughout here, um, like doing something like this where it's a template design, let me know. Uh, how to take something like this and maybe simplify it further i can do that too or maybe even just deleting pieces like say you just wanted to keep the cool little handle but you don't want to unfold the rest of the model you don't want to go through the hassle you can take this model into blender you can cut all of this way and just leave that handle then toss it into pep designer and then break it down so that way you only have this little model to work with and not the entire gun um you could do that too uh, I've come across like full, I wish I'd known that years ago because like when I came across full like suits of armor and I just wanted the helmet, it would have been a great uh, asset to know like, you know, how to do that. So let me know, um, but I think I'm going to end it there. Like I said, I'm not going to continue the rest of the unfold for the uh, Gundam helmet. You could watch the previous video on how to break down, like how to put it on the pages, how to make sure everything's symmetrical and stuff like that in the other video but thank you so much guys for watching uh and i will see you in the future hopefully thank you